Thank you, Anne. Um, I, I'm going to speak very quickly, and I, I want to, to just say how wonderful this meeting has been. Um, Jose, what a great talk, and, and Hans, I thought it was fantastic, and people before it. Um, let, I'm, I've, um, there was too much material for me to give, so I really cut a huge amount out. I'm going to focus in on only one thing, and that is um, the last year and a half we've been trying to set up clinical trials in China to test a cell transplant and drug therapy combination in spinal cord injury, what it took, what are the obstacles, and, and what it means from, from the viewpoint of the United States. And I, I use this provocative title, is there is the cure for spinal cord injury in China? And the answer is, of course, not yet. Um, first, uh, uh, my wife complained awful uh, about this font, so I apologize for the <laughs> font to begin with. But anyway, uh, basically, uh, it was, it's meant to remind me of, of certain things to say, but the incidence of spinal cord injury is enormous in China, um, and it's been increasing. In uh, the 1980s, it was 5.4 cases per million. Uh, 1995, it was shown to be somewhere between 6.7 to 13.7 cases per minute, million, and then in an unpublished study in, nine, in 2005, the incidence has been documented to be 64 cases per million, and this translates to approximately 80,000, more than 80,000 cases per year in, in China. And um, for comparison, the incidence in the United States is 35 cases per million about 10,000. So, so they have close to eight times more spinal cord injuries, absolute number, than we do. And they have more than twice the, per population than we do. And it's a, and it's a very scary number. Uh, the prevalence is not known, but I just made a rough uh, back of the envelope guess as, as, to what, as to what it is. I assume that there were 250,000 people with spinal cord injury in, 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 in China in, in 1990. And I assume that the, the incidence went from 6 to 60 over the last 15 years, and that the incidence, uh, I mean, the survival was 90%, and then there were 2% annual mortality rates. And given that, I came up with a number like 600,000 uh, 600, people with spinal cord injury. And if you continue this extrapolation, it goes up to about a million in, in the year 2020. So th this, uh, I estimate, would be approximately a third of the world population of spinal cord injury. So China has a very significant spinal cord injury problem. And by the way, this is just spinal cord injury. You, you do it for head injury. You do it for everything else. They have a big problem. It's bigger than anywhere else in the whole world. They need clinical trials more than anybody else. And, and by the way, they, they know and understand this. <coughs> um, Spinal cord injury care in, in uh, China is very limited, um, in part because they're, and I, I will tell you, talk a little bit more about it, the medical care system has been transforming very rapidly at a pace that you cannot believe. Um, but in acute care, they do bony co decompression, stabilization, like, er like here, but one difference is that they do laminectomies on almost every patient. It's, it's just routine. If they operate on the patient, they do a laminectomy. And very frequently, they do a front uh, uh, and anterior uh, fixation. They flip the patient over do, and do a laminectomy. I mean, they would do both sides, and it's on a routine basis. They do it without second thinking about it. They just do it. Um, they do it so fast, it's unbelievable. The typical spinal surgeon in China has, operates on 400 cases a year. And they have so much more experience operating, there's no comparison. No U.S. surgeon I, uh, has anywhere close to the kind of experience that the average spinal neurosurgeon in, or orthopedic surgeon in China has. Rehabilitation is almost non-existent. There are maybe four or five centers in all of China that provides rehabilitation, and we're struggling now to, to bring rehabilitation to our centers. Chronic, uh, but however, uh, in a few centers, they provide state-of-the-art rehabilitation that I think far exceeds anything in the U.S. And we can talk about that uh, at, at another point. Chronic care is abysmal. There's no mechanism for chronic care. There's nobody to take care of the patients. So I have seen patients who are four or five years after injury still with a Foley catheter inside them, having repeated urinary, urinary tract infections, and then my telling the patients that if they don't change this, they will die, and then they go through the telephone with doctors 
in Hong Kong to find out how to do intermittent cath. I mean, this is how bad it can be. Um, things like neuropathic pain is treated with acupuncture and, and, and herbal medicines. It's a veil of tears in terms of chronic care in China, and this is something that needs to be addressed uh, very seriously. Um, now, when I arrived there in 1999, um, there were all sorts of rumors of clinical trials of all sorts. I mean, uh, people were saying, well, they were putting in fetal stem cells, doing this and that and that. I wasn't able to find any of it. It was actually very difficult to find. I've, I, I can say now that I have visited over 100 hospitals myself. I've interviewed the doctors. I've talked to almost everybody involved. And there have been very few actual clinical trials. And the ones I list here are the ones that I, I've actually encountered. <coughs> so in terms of subacute therapies, uh, this hospital in Jingzhou called the Hunan People's Provincial Hospital has now done about 220 patients with bone marrow autographs, CD34+. plus. Not enough recovery to write home to mom about, and I think they're stopping the trial. Um, there's an incredible study that we're trying now to get published. I'm helping them publish this, and I've analyzed the data. I've examined all the patients. Uh, really quite an impressive study. They're doing intramedullary decompression of the patients between 2 to 65 days after injury. They're doing what uh, uh, Reginald Allen did in 1911. Uh, you may recall he's a, a Philadelphia physician who took dogs, contused them, and then afterwards he cut open their spinal cord and washed the necrotic things out, and these uh, dogs uh, were much better. In, in Kunming, they have done 30 patients. Between two to 65 days after injury, all Asia A, complete spinal cord injuries, they would go in, open up the spinal cord, if, uh, remove all adhesions, and then if they felt that the spinal cord was soft, necrotic underneath, they'll do a lateral myelotomy, which is, I think, the best approach. And they would wash the necrotic material out, and over 50% of the patients recover walking. Really impressive. They also showed that it is safe, but the one thing that they did show was that this kind of exposure of the spinal cord may have significant therapeutic effects, and this really brings up the issue of what should the proper control be in transplantation. In terms of chronic spinal cord injury, the therapy that has achieved the, the largest number of uh, patients that have been used is olfactory and sheathing glial cells. These are obtained from fetal cells, and I'm just going to tell you a very quick story. I'm going to talk as quickly as I can, but a uh, former postdoctoral fellow of mine in who worked with me 1999 to 2001, isolating rat olfactory and sheathing glial cells from uh, neonatal uh, olfactory bulb, uh, went back to China. He was at that time the head of the Naval Hospital Neurosurgery, and uh, this is 2001, he went back and he, 9-11 uh, was happening in the U.S. So I, but anyway, on Christmas of, of 2001, he wrote me an email and he said, why is I just transplanted fetal olfactory and sheathing glial cells into 35 patients with spinal cord injury and they seem to be recovering. I said, well, you did what? <laughs> and he says, look, you know, the method that we use to grow the cells is the same that we use in the neonatal rats. You know, neonatal rats look like <laughs> human fetus is about the same size, the method, the same method works. So I, the first time I went out there in, in April of 2002, I examined uh, his patients. By that time, he had already done 160 patients. He, um, uh, I think uh, was transplanting these cells uh, into the patients, up to 171 patients. He was exposing the injury site and just injecting the cells above and below the injury site and doing a wide laminectomy. After the first 171 patients, he went to mini laminectomies right around the injury site and just not even exposing the injury site, but, but injecting into the surrounding areas. And um, I confirmed at least two of his observations at that time. Number one, um, almost all the patients I saw had at least four to eight dermatomes de uh, lowering of their sensory uh, level, which was actually quite impressive. And this was occurring within six weeks after injury. Uh, after